everyone welcome welcome to today's live stream um i'm here with michael rada founder of industry 5.0 and he was asking like hey you know how many people are are in the average audience and i was like yeah you know like four four or five thousand and so <laughs> but in all seriousness uh you know this is our weekly live stream thank you all for joining make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you can catch us when we go live we have awesome guests like this uh you know multiple times per month um Michael was uh, in the chat in, 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 uh, when we were interviewing um, a couple weeks ago. We interviewed Alistair Gil uh, Gilchrist, the founder, the author of Industry 4.0. And uh, Michael was in the comments. So, you know, we brought him, brought him on the podcast. So, Michael, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Welcome, Mason. Welcome, Alan. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Amy. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Cheryl. Okay, so let's just start out like I'm going to go to the very last question that I have. Um, so like what is it that you do in industry and how do you apply your vision for industry 5.0 to what you do in industry? Um, so, okay, uh, just a little bit to my background. I am a logistician for more than 30 years, so I deal a lot of with logistics. But for the last nine years, I do concentrate on the systematic waste prevention. It's, uh, it's something which I have to develop in 2013. It was called uh, industrial upcycling at the time. The name was given by me. And one and a half year later, my clients told me, Mr. Rada, that's not a methodology anymore. It's an industry. So I found I was looking for a name and I assigned the name of Industry 5.0 and was luckily the first in the world who named it so and who named the principal. So what I do in the factories and businesses, I teach people and businesses how not to waste. It sounds crazy, but it works. There is a lot of savings because there is a lot of wasting. Right now, if we speak about Ukraine, uh, war is waste. And war industry is the most profitable industry in the world. Waste industry is the third one. So in between is just crude oil. So this is what I do. I go to the factory or school or bank. I identify what is wasting. Uh, it must. It can be physical, social, urban or, or process waste. And I do implement tools and systems uh, to prevent this wasting. It does not cost anything usually, just my time and I'm cheap, but uh, the return of the investment is usually shorter than my time in a factory. Awesome. Would you consider yourself like a consultant? Uh, no, not really. I, some clients called me, call me consultant, but, uh, you know, I was all the time called out of the box thinker until 2015 when I realized that there is everyone is out of box thinker in the room. So you don't even see the box. And at the time I call myself, I start to call myself under the carpet looker because the waste is swiped under the carpet. So I will call myself under the carpet looker more than a consultant. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So in your, um, you know, in your keynote, you talk about six types of waste and we're all familiar with the three types, the three main types of waste reduction strategy, like reduce, reuse, and recycle. You talk about six R's. What are, what are those six R's or what are the, you know, the, the additional ones? Uh, yeah. So the additional ones are edit. So they are in front of the original ones. The reason why I have to do it this way, because the three R does not work in reality. It was created not to reduce, but to increase the volume of waste, which you will realize when you make the analytics as I did. And the new three R's, first is you have to recognize. So recognize that something must not become waste. And trust me, it's not easy if you waste it all the time. The second is reconsider what to do with the item which you just saved. And it's even harder. If you, if you have in your hand um, whatever, which you wasted all the time, you will see the original item in it. So it's quite hard. But the third one I love most, it's realize it. Just do it. So simple it is. Uh, one great example, I was invited to a factory which uh, work with wood generally, and they have, a, they have a wood scrap. And I asked the owner who, who owned the company and who was the founder generally for 30 years, what it is? And he said, scrap, you cannot do anything with it. So 
We took few parts with him, with me. The next time I came to him, I bring him this. Generally, it's a phone, phone stand. And he was sitting in his office, generally crying. And he said, never ever in 30 years, I considered that this can be useful. So he, he gave us an order to make a, a Christmas gift generally for his clients. And he has, uh, the response was unbelievable because he never had anything similar uh, given to, the, to his client. So this is three, six R. Then came the reduce, reuse, recycle. But if you do first three R's correctly, you don't need to do the rest because there will be no waste. Would you consider that like a, a differentiation between industry 5.0 and what the majority of industry is doing right now, like with the fourth industrial revolution? Uh, for sure, because industry 5.0 is not a revolution. That's very different thing. Because I have analyzed, before I started industry 5.0, I have analyzed the industrial revolutions. And if you do, you will see that they are shorter and shorter, generally half the time of the previous one. And the second is that for every revolution, it has few conditions. First one, you, you, you have to be willing to kill someone, generally, to kill the old ones. Uh, and the second is, if you pay more to, yours, to your opponent's soldiers, they will come to you. So, and the revolution is a short, Shot, but industry 5.0 is first industrial evolution, and this makes it so different because uh, evolution is here for millions of years. We don't have to fuel it with money or so. No, I don't do it. And what is interesting, every business, every single one, waste in a different form. So until I started, generally everybody speaks in the business about profit and profitability. There is nothing wrong about it. It's correct. But what is interesting, everybody speaks about profit, but nobody speaks about waste. But everyone is wasting. It can be wasting of process. It can be a wasting of time, of power, whatever. Every one of us is wasting. And what is interesting, if you would like to uh, implement something from industry 4.0, let's speak about the latest one, you have to invest a lot of money first. You have to change the forms, the systems, whatever, because you have to change the process itself or the setup. But if you stop wasting, it does not cost you anything. It's just change of your mindset. You can stop right now without any investment. And what is interesting, the savings are not small. So you can save this way millions of dollars because you just stop wasting. And it is important to understand what is waste. And this is one of the issue because many see waste only as something which you throw away in a garbage bin. But if you look at the legislation and in the US is the same, it's slightly different in the, in the US states, but generally it's the same. Waste is something which you place on a location dedicated to waste storage, which means if you have a golden engagement ring and it falls down in a garbage bin, you cannot take it out according to the law because it becomes waste. And what is interesting, I will show you that in a, with my business card generally, let me show it to the others. So if we meet in one room, I'm old schooler, I'm used to give you my business card. So I will give you my business card, you take it, everything is fine. Just now, please erase this memory and there is one difference. Before we meet in one room, we came to each other and in the middle, somebody plays completely new stainless steel garbage bin, okay? I come to you, I fall down and, and, and my business card fall inside the garbage bin. I do not have any second one, I'm stupid, sorry for that. But you, for whatever reason, would like to have my uh, business card. We look inside, the garbage bin is completely empty, only my business card is there. So you said, okay, Mike, pick it up and I will take it. So I pick it up, I check it whether it's not dirty, I apologize again, hand it over to you and just now the crazy part. If you take this business card from me in Czech Republic, you take with it the right on a penalty of 20,000 US dollars. 
it will be the most expensive business card you ever get. Do you know why? Why? Because it it fall in a location. If this hand is a garbage bin, sorry, the camera show it different way, like in a mirror. So uh, I am not so so. Yes, great. Uh, if this is the edge of the garbage bin, okay. Look how it works. Here is a business card, but here it become a waste. It does not happen to this business card anything. But this says the law: if something could reach the edge of the garbage bin, it become waste. And this is why the waste industry is the third most profitable industry in the world because everything become waste immediately. How you prevent waste happen? This is what I do. You just catch. In the middle, you cut the process between product and waste. Here, as a product, you can use it as a bookmark in your book. It doesn't matter. But here, you cannot. It becomes waste. You have to pay for it. Generally, you pay a waste management cost. You pay a lot of things to get rid of your waste. But the waste legislation does not say whether it's new, old, gold, whatever. It does not care because the waste industry, I have all, the, all my years, I have in my image that waste industry is here to clean the world. Sorry, it's not here. The core business of waste industry is to manage waste, not to prevent waste happen. And this is why our, our generally, our planet turned into landfill. Right. And, sure. but, but this is why Industry 5.0 is so efficient because you just cut the process in the middle. You don't have to invest. Right. So that example with the scraps and then that became a cell phone holder, they went from having to pay to remove that to you know, selling, selling that product? Exactly. They just don't have to put the scrap in the garbage bin. They have to work with it like with the material. And, you know, I spend four or five days in a factories, usually, in a boiler suit working with the workers. I have seen, sometimes I'm crying there, to be honest. I was attending, I was with one of my clients, which is one of the biggest distributor of, uh, of fruits and, and, and vegetables in the country. And there came a truck full of reddish, fresh reddish, refused by the retail chain store buyer because the leaves, which we do not eat, the leaves has not been green enough. Do you know what happened with a full truck of radish? Immediately goes to garbage. Nobody try to cut the leaves away, make something out of it. No, the automatic process was wasted. I have a question. And, yeah. So I, I don't think there's anyone here that would like disagree with what you're saying. I mean, it's it makes a lot of sense. And, and, and I, I liked how you explained what you meant by industry 5.0 and reduction of waste can come without any capital expense. I've, so industry 4.0 was came out maybe about like a decade ago, right? Like 10 years ago? Uh, 2011, generally, officially. Uh, 2011, unofficially in Germany, but 2013 was the official launch. So you are close to it. Okay. And you said like from industry 1.0 to industry 2.0 was about 100 years. And then from 2.0 to 3.0 was about half that. Industry 4.0 was in 2011. When did industry 5.0 come out? Like, you know, if it was about- December half. 1st, 2015. So like two, like two years after industry 4.0? Yeah. So then wouldn't one year later, like industry 6.0 come out? if it continues uh, the pattern like so what is the difference between that and you know why is the pattern not why is it at industry 5.0 now versus industry 6.0 or yeah i was given this question for the first time in 2017 and when i have a keynote speech in to the fashion industry in france i was surprised about it because i never thought about it but uh, i need a month to answer generally and the difference is that 4.0 is still the revolution. 5.0 is the evolution. So if there will come 6.0 for whatever reason, and I do recommend that if somebody would like to do IoT, they shouldn't call it industry 5.0 because it's not. They should call it 6.0. Uh, 
the difference is that uh, if they will go for full digitalization from four to six, skipping the five generally, uh, they have to digitalize the human. So simple it is. If you would like to be happy in the metaverse, you have to be digitalized yourself. Otherwise, the body is limiting you. And that's a very big risk because somebody has to switch and it will not be you. And all the time when I ask, when I have been talking with somebody who is really saying that it, everything should be digitalized, I just ask him or her how the digital bread tastes in the water. Nobody was able to answer this. But if it, from industry 5.0 will go to 6, imagine that as a tree. Because there is only one role model of industry 5.0. It's not Elon Musk. It's not Jeff Bezos. No, it's nature. Because nature does not waste. So simple it is. And if 6.0 will come as a, it will be a branch. Because evolution, once started, you cannot stop evolution. And it has started already. So it's here for seven years already. So if it will go six, will result from four, it's very dangerous. It will be digitalization in an unlimited scope. And I see that very dangerous for the human being and humanity. But if it goes as a branch of, of the tree of 5.0, it's fine. It will be just a branch. And for for 5.0, it, it does not mean that the machines and artificial intelligence, all what we spend a lot of time on it, that it will not be there. No, it's not true. They are so-called on-the-ground minds for industry 5.0. On-the-ground minds means some call it existing resources. And these existing resources are there. And we will use it. We just don't let the artificial intelligence or the smartwatch... I I do not have a smartwatch. Uh, I do not have any watch, too, which is crazy. But uh, And I am a logistician, but I'm all the time in time because I work slightly different with the time. I do not run against the time. I am with the time. With my block, I am three months ahead. So I know what will happen until uh, today. I finished my article for uh, June 15th. And it happened. I tested for one year ahead few years ago, but don't let the tools, including the digital ones, become the masters. In Czechia, we have a one saying which says, fire is a good servant, but a very good master. And in every language exists something similar. I realized uh, two years ago that I'm addicted to my smartphone. There was new Android update, which counts the time which you spend on it and so on, including the number, how many times you unlock a day. I was on a number 360. And at the time I said to me, I'm addicted. Do you know what I did? How I get rid of the addiction? I go to my cupboard and I take this one out. Nokia 63.1 E, the only phone in a history which was three years in a line, the best business phone in the world at the time. I switched it on after 10 years, 80% of battery, unbelievable. What, is, what was hard? And I said to me, okay, for three months, I will use only this one. I have to use this one as well as a contact phone book and so on, and I have to take a lot of images, but I never made a call or a, a, a send a message out of this. And I realized what make me addicted, notifications. And I switch all notifications off except of calling and SMS message. And right now, this 360 dropped to seven to 14 times a day I'm opening this phone. Seven to 14? <laughs> yeah. And since then, I called this not a dump phone, no. This is a vice phone. This one is smart, but this one is wise. Mm. That's the big difference. And I have it in front of on my desk to remember me all the time, to look at it, that the addiction came, can come very fast because the virtual and digital look so great. 
Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. So uh, Tom asked, um, isn't what you are saying just another form of creating an industry that supports a true circular economy, which goes beyond recycling? That's a tricky question, but I love this question because I was asked many times. You know, there is one issue issue with the circular economy. Why, if it exists for almost 60 years, why there is no circular industry? There is something wrong with it. And the wrong part, I discovered what was wrong. Generally, they concentrate more on the part of economy instead of the circularity. Because if you would like to make something new, you have to invest a lot of money first. And the result is you don't know about. So I offered to all the circular experts, which I met and so on during other years, to cooperate with us. The issue is that the circular economy expert or the group use the same words like the waste industry. They say, waste is treasure. And just now, please try to answer to me, or Tom can do it. Will you try to get rid of your treasures? Probably not. No, no, because a lot of times just reducing the waste is the most optimal outcome rather than like trying to create some product for the waste. You could just reduce the waste in the first place, you know. They have it in the in the papers. There is a waste reduction, but I never met a single company where circular economy was implemented, where the circular economy experts ever try to get rid of the waste by preventing it to happen. But it is, as you have seen with the business card, it is possible. Right. So what is an example of an industry, a circular industry? Like? Hmm. That's very few. Very few. Uh, hard to say. I think uh, one of the fashion industry players, I think is the US one, uh, does really try to push on circularity by even if your clothing is somehow broken, they sew it again and then and so on. But there are very few. I cannot name it. I don't know. What I do, for example, with uh, with uh, returnable packaging. So there is a lot of single use packaging. So what we do in a factory is we turn the single use and we teach the clients to reuse it again. Because if not the same supplier, other supplier can use it. And you know, there are 74% of wooden, no, 54%, uh, sorry, 54% of wooden packaging is used just a single time. Not broken. Like a pallet or something? Or? Mm-hmm. That's horrible. And 75 cardboard packaging. They are thrown away without a single damage. Because it's B2B generally, it's industry to industry. So it's not wet, it's not thing broken, and still they throw it away because they use it as a single use. I just hurt my back last Friday because I have loaded again full truck of cable drums, empty cable drums. I do it for three years. You have to load seven tons by hand in one hour time. And I'm 50, so it's not an easy task. And just last week I had a trouble, so I, I did something to my back. And, but you can do it. It's just needed to find somebody who will need it. And this is why we we create an industry 5.0, so-called industry 5.0 world. And we would like to have it on a global scale. Like you can imagine it as Amazon for existing products. But if I speak about existing products, I speak about all buses. I speak about full factories. I speak even about cities, which there are no, no people inside. So all these are on the ground minds. And I speak about people who does not have work. So that's why Industry 5.0 goes so big in such a short time. We created a 94 countries network in 12 months. Physical network, not a virtual one. There are 94 Industry 5.0 ambassadors in 94 countries. That's pretty sick. It, it, trust me, it's really hard to meet on one place and one time, but it works because all of them implement the same principles which I developed, invented, give to them, and they are able to implement and their clients benefit from it. So this is why I will see, I think there are some some of my ambassadors even in the group. So 
Awesome. That's why uh, well, Tom says, um, that's why we do not call waste waste, but refer to it as a resource. Most companies claiming circular economy are really just doing recycling, not, not the same. And, and the point is to do recycling, you can recycle only waste. That's the, that's the main issue. If you will be able to recycle non-waste, but that's not, you can upcycle something, a product, but to recycle, you have to make a waste. All right. So what about <laughs> medical supply <laughs> waste or? Uh, the yard exceptions. Uh, nuclear waste is very special thing. If you look in, in Switzerland, they store, I think, 30 years of their nuclear waste in a warehouse. In a, in a special tanks. They don't dig it in, in the ground. And why they do it? Because they know very well that soon, and I think in the US was one product, uh, project already approved by the authorities, there will be a small size nuclear power station in a size of a home. And this small size nuclear power station will be fueled by the nuclear waste, which is not enough for a factory to run or a city to run, but it's it's enough to for a village to run for 10 years. And they really store it in a warehouse. It's it's a special warehouse. There are special tanks for it, but it's one warehouse. That's crazy. Uh, for the medical one, uh, you know, there are a lot of tools, uh, steel made from stainless steel and so on, which are being thrown away after one and single use. Why? Already our grandfathers and mothers clean it with a steam. We have much better technology to clean it. Why should we use a single use? And if we speak about the supplies, we have COVID and so on. So there was a lot of face mask. I wear all my time, all two years, one face mask, only this one. It's a professional one. It's used by even by U.S. Army. And you just switch the filters, but the, fil but the nano filters are so good that I wear one for one year. I don't have to switch it. And the cost of this, if you compare the cost, it was lower than if I buy every single day a new face mask. That's cool. And, and there was no waste. That's the interesting part about. So my... Real example from COVID time. Oh, actually, more oh, actually more. what is 5.0? 5.0 is the next step. Next step. There was a 4.0. And if I name my work differently, like industrial upcycling, if I stitch with industrial upcycling, the companies will not understand. They understand the word industry. And they do understand that after four came five. So this is why I name it this way. It was very clear topic and issue. I describe it in the very first article, uh, why I'm the founder generally. You cannot attend the name because the name industry is too general to be protected. But from the intellectual property point of view, I was the first in the world who published an article where Industry 5.0 was given a content. And this article was published on December 1st, 2015. And some academics already refer it. Then two years later, or one and a half years later, I published the Industry 5.0 definition. Interesting part about it, uh, Wikipedia re refused to publish it for seven times. Generally, they refuse it. So I publish it on my blog. And still, on my blog, there is over 50,000 views. Uh, and it's growing after I change it from, uh, from Medium, uh, from... We keep, uh, from LinkedIn generally to 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 Medium because it's because of better accessibility. Okay. Um, Alan said, uh, "Would you please expand on what sy sy systemic waste reduction methodologies you use for Industry 5.0? For instance, lean manufacturing, lean Six Sigma, or are you using uh, methodology agnostic?" Uh, I use a lot of things from logistics. So Lean Six Sigma is one of those. Uh, uh, I use Lean, of course, methodology, but the main tool is the 6R methodology. So redu uh, recognize, reconsider, realize. 
And then the reduce, reuse, recycle, but usually you don't need it three anymore. And this is applied in, in an environment where you will realize that if you do it right, you don't need any special methodology anymore because you just learn not to waste. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. And with Industry 5.0, was one thing was very surprising for me because there was nobody in 2013 who ever tried to prevent waste happen on industrial scale. Nobody in the world. Uh, so it was a blue ocean project, same as Industry 5.0 later. And there is one big advantage. You set up the rules. You have no competition, which is great. So I received several awards because I was the best. Of course, because there was nobody else. Uh, but because I am a logistician and I am a systematic guy, I am educating logistic innovations on a on an academy, on a logistic academy, and I have speeches so on, on over 180 universities already. I do not have university degree myself, so that's crazy as well. But uh, you don't need some special methodology. You just follow logic. Of course, you have to make it systematic after but you just follow the logic. Or have you seen that a tree has a timetable and a business plan? No, I never saw it. Every single seat is different. And that's the, that's the topic. We shouldn't live for making mass production. And unfortunately, Industry 4.0 is supporting the mass production. I went to factories which produce cars, steel, whatever. And some of them, realize at the end when we make the analytics they produce 80 percent of waste new products become waste because there was market demand but not the real demand what is interesting i'm not economist but i i study a lot of things my brain works slightly different i can adopt a lot of things and it's 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 hard to explain but uh there was interesting thing I realized that somewhere 18 something, whatever, there was a guy, economist, who, who named a very special thing. You know MOQ, minimum order quantity, or MBQ. But he named MEQ, minimal economical quantity. And for whatever reason, this term somehow disappeared from the industry. What was interesting, in his calculation, he calculated waste, wasting, and everything around. Because one of the principles which we use, I call it uh, logistic paradoxes. One of the paradoxes is less is more. Less is more. You will say, that's nonsense. No, it's not. If you produce 100 cars and 90 of those will stay somewhere and you have to store them because they do not have anyone to buy. And there, you know, there exists a graveyards of new cars in almost every country where cars are being produced. Uh, you spend a lot of money on material, on work, on everything. And you never get the money back because you do not sell the car. But if you produce a car for a concrete customer, you make less cars, bigger profit. And if you do not waste, you do not have to pay for the waste management. And that's a skyrocketing cost. So what's so difficult? This is MEQ generally. It's something which is more than 100 years old. I don't remember the name of the guy, but MEQ, look for it. It's, it was quite interesting and surprising for me. All right. Real quick. Um, what brand is that mask, Michael? Uh, what brand is what? the mask the mask it, uh, it's called nanologic nanologic i can uh, send after or i can write it in a can i write in chat no uh i don't see the possibility okay i will send it later martin because said, i uh, don't see here the possibility to write in a chat martin said not the first in the world to be just full of shit greetings from czech republic vol not sure what he meant by that, but I don't know. You're from Czech, right? Yeah, I am. I am, and it's it's crazy that uh, generally seventy kilo, seventy five kilometers from here was the word robot introduced for the first time in nineteen thirty four. 
by Czech writer. So it's generally Vort, which has been invented in Czech Republic, 75 kilometers from here by Karl Chap. Cheryl asked, market demand is not real demand. El elaborate, please. Market demand is a virtual number. It has nothing to do with the real demand. If you produce a cars or TV sets, you usually do not sell to the end user as a, as a factory. You sell to your sales organization. Sales organization is, is evaluated by sales and sales people are evaluated by numbers which they predict generally not reach at the end. So if you sell, you sell to, from wholesale, you sell to wholesale, wholesale sell to someone, but it does not mean it, it needs someone. It does not mean that the TV set will reach the end user. Not at all. And if you analyze it, you will see that the discrepancy is huge, especially, for example, food. I was doing a few years ago uh, generally workshops for the largest uh, hotel and chain store of restaurants in the world. And I analyze how much food and crop is wasted. You know, uh, I am sure you remember that uh, there is a in every family, grandma says to you all the time or your mother, eat it all what's on the plate. Clean it, don't waste. And I was all the time thinking, okay, that must be a huge amount of waste, which it's the rest on the plate. And I realized that it's only 2%. 75% of global crop and food never reach a second stage of production. So we produce food and we throw away 75%. It's not true that we need to produce more food. No, we have to reduce the wasting. And this is the difference between real demand and market demand. How can you see full containers filled with fresh bread? And the not, really, I have images, and I use them in my, in my keynotes and so on which I, I took myself, full containers filled with bread. Why is it 75%? I don't know why. I get this number from, uh, from online sources, generally including UN and the others. Generally, I have the answer why. I don't know how they came to the number, but I, I, I have the answer why. Because it's on a wrong place in a wrong time. That's all. A uh, few months ago, there was an uh, issue in Australia, with, not with floods, but generally overproduction of avocados. What happened with these avocados? Landfill. This is what happens. Because it's on a wrong place, on a wrong time, but why? We have planes, we can deliver its food, and there is missing a connection. Uh, one of the issues which I see in uh, almost all factories and businesses, there is a lack of communication. When you start a project within a new factory or new environment, the first what I have to do is sign NDA. Why? <laughs> I don't want to steal their data. I just want to work with their data and they sh should share it with their clients. Because as I said, there can be a box or a pallet or whatever which can be used by someone else in the supply chain. So why not to provide it? Because I have a crazy project quite a long time ago. There was a company in, importing a, a lot of stuff from China, sensitive electronics. So it came in a box and around the box, there has been this polystyrene inlays, this white stuff. And they throw away every single year on a landfill 400 metric tons, just one crazy thing. On one truck, 20 tons truck, fit 950 kilo because of the shape of the inlay. You cannot so easily press it. So it was 443 trucks. The same factory has their own supplier of a new polystyrene inlays, 300 meters from the factory. It was an industrial park generally and they buy new polystyrene parts for the final products. I went one day to the factory of the supplier and I came there in a moment when they put this inlays, some other inlays in a, in a machine and it make 
and it's stay only the small white balls. And I said, well, it's a new technology. And they said, no, it's, it's an old one. We can turn the old material into, into new material generally. And I said, why didn't you tell to your client? The answer was they never asked for. And I asked the client and he said, I didn't know about it. So from one day to another, we stopped the supply chain. We stopped supplying landfill. We used the truck, which came with the new products loaded with the old ones. And they say 50 million US uh, check crowns, which is about $2 million at the time without investing a single penny. The reason for such a wasting, they did not sp spoke together. They discussed price. That was all. But it was so-called uh, one-to-one negotiation, buyer and seller. But what I do implement is multi-layer relationship. I don't know why I came with this name. I, it's hard to pronounce for me. I came with it in Japan generally. What is that? Multi-layer uh, relationship means that not only the manager talk to general manager, but all the levels, logistician talk together, which is not the case, buyers, sellers, even the, the, even the technicians. So different layers in the company talk to different partners in, in the second company. Even if you have a supply chain with several suppliers, why should have every supplier their own logistic manager? Isn't it supply chain? Isn't it a chain? When I have a workshop for logisticians and they are experts, I ask them usually where ends up or where starts, it's a better question, where starts a supply chain? What do you think? Where a supply chain is starting? Any idea? That's a good question. I mean, it's either at the consumer or at the raw material, right? It's either. And just now I will show you one interesting thing. I just wake up your professional blindness. Sorry, this is, a, this is illness which is common. And you get it after six months of working in one, one environment. And I will explain. You concentrate on the word supply. And you completely forgot the word chain. What happened if you tear a chain? Because with your answer, you tear the chain. You do not have chain anymore. You do not have the function of circul circulating. You just, you have a piece of something which you can swipe, but it's not a chain. And this is exactly what happens. So if you break the chain, you usually, or if you improve one part of a chain, just one, you create usually two bottlenecks at least. Because even if you make this one part of the chain from gold or another material, the other connections will be weaker or stronger and it will not work. So you have to see complexity. And this is what is missing. Right. Well, I, I think um, when, you, you, when you were talking about having like... Um, you know, all of the information available to all of the different layers and, and not only that within the company, but within multiple companies that are within a supply chain, you basically made the case for what we're talking about with industry 4.0 digital companies with the goal of plugging into a digital supply chain. So I think we're on this, we're on the same page there. Right? As I said, they are tools and I include a lot of things. I was today in the morning on artificial intelligent discussion generally, or yesterday, I don't remember anymore. Uh, and yes, you can use it. Maybe you use it a different way. What you see here behind me, they are broken vinyl records, sourced in a biggest factory, biggest producer in the world generally. It's close to here. They throw away every single day up to 10,000 pieces because they sound bad and for Vinyl producer, the sound is the only criteria. What we made out of it, we generally turn it, it's six hour work to cut this by hand. This is a 
first Czech president, for example, who, who created a country from nothing. And that's important to see the, the potential. So if you see where the overproduction of crop of avocado is, you will see it not at the day of getting the crop out of the fields. You already have it before and you can use uh, advanced planning systems. You can use prediction systems. You can use a lot of. Do you know how much data which are collected in data centers are waste, never used again, just collected? I just make it. You are right, 85 to 92 percent. So we are collecting data and we do not I use it. In your industry 4.0, you already learn how to utilize the data. But if you if you take a warehouse worker who has this scanning gun generally to scan, you use only one information out of the scan, the scan itself. But you know who it holds in the hand, you know where it was, you know where he was, but you don't use this information at all. You, choose, you use just one. And that's this limited vision, which I try to break up because this is the wasting. This is generally process wasting. And it's very common, very common. Question. Yeah, don't make, don't make assumptions about how data would be consumed. David asked, uh, well, actually, Martin, Martin said, leaving before more brain cell brain cells die. Bye, bye, Martin. We're gonna we're, we'll miss you, Martin. Um, Cheryl said we overproduce food, and then the waste is atrocious. Much going to landfill before ever getting to market. I know with all those avocados being thrown out, I'm just thinking of like maybe for a couple days they could have had free guac at Chipotle, but you know that that would have been a full full realization of industry 5.0. Um, and then the last one was um, David said, what is the purpose of Industry 5.0? I feel like it's just something for thinkers and not doers. It's just a conceptual and not okay. useful for anybody. Also, first mention of Industry 5.0 as early as 2005. And we, this is the, we get this a lot, actually. Uh, David, uh, I, am, I am not theoretical. I never work in a theory. I implement everything in a factory. So we have prevented over 1 million metric tons with this methodology in just seven years without any funding, any investors, anybody. We just work with our hand. There is one tool which is more powerful than anything else. It's called the, the power of touch. If you what try you to metric tons, yes, of metric tons, 1 million metric tons. And when I started the waste industries, which I generally invited to join me to preventing waste happen and they just say you will never be able to prevent even one kilo of waste in 2019 we hit one million tons what about time time is wasted a lot but you can learn how to avoid the wasting of time you know i do not wear the watch I do not drive a car, but electric unicycle instead. I have learned I never use a alarm clock. When I have to wake up at five, I wake up, it's inside my body at 4.45. And generally I stop to try to run against the time. It become my friend. And I was even a time traveler generally writing blogs every single day for every single day. And I was able to reach one year ahead. And what was crazy about it, it happened the same day. And that was very strange. So I think that generally time travel into the future is possible, but you have to go step by step. And trust me, it's very easy to do your work, write additionally for every single day of a year ahead. It's hard work. It was worth. I'm right now on May 15 at the moment in of English. Year, yes. yes. Okay. Does true demand differ between retailers with different standards for their product and price? And don't we just feel the wastage as consumers at the end of the day from automation and mechatronic solutions? Um, there we came again to the communication issue. 
uh, there is a lot of miscommunication and uh, the, the producer try to push the responsibility to, to, toward us. They are in many countries, they are trying to implement so-called uh, producer responsibility, but it's not implemented in a full scale, so it's right. We just, uh, you know, uh, last week, I think, hit uh, some um, garbage, the moon, some garbage from the, from the orbit. I don't know whether you know, but on the orbit is, uh, I think, 170 million pieces of space trash already now, calculated by NASA. Uh, and uh, one of my first projects was to go to the orbit and to see how to clean it, because I need to see and touch generally. But at the time, then it was it was uh, a cancel because uh, this challenge, with, which was 2014, I think, by uh, Richard Branson and Jaguar Land, Land Rover generally, then one of the record blast up and they kill some other people inside has been killed. So it was canceled. But generally, if you will pick up the waste on the orbit, Everybody says, it's not mine. China says, no, on the orbit. And Elon Musk says, no, it's, they are not my. But generally, there is a clear branding who own it. OK, if I have the racket, I will go there. I will pick it up. Why? Because the owners will pay a lot of money not to get their own material in, in other hands. Despite the fact right now they said, it's not mine. Okay, everybody will pay a lot of money. Why not to do it? Why not to pick it up? But I have to see it. So I, I start a, a project in a factory and I teach all the ambassadors to do the, so, to do the same. Go to the factory, see it with our own eyes because the companies do not recognize the wasting. They, are, they, are, they have this, this professional blindness. We just make an audit in uh, one factory in Slovakia and they see that uh, they have a lot of single-use packaging, but they, let's say, scrap it the right way and give it to the give it to some parts to the employees. But they never consider to reuse it. And this is the change. This is the change. The switch to industry 5.0. This switch of mindset. We call it from wasteful to wasteless, and it's really about switching inside the mind you you start to live with what is interesting with every single realized project you get this first three hours of the six hour you get faster i need for the first projects i need sometime months to come to the real idea what to do with the item right now i need seconds i see it I see something and already in my brain, I see the result. What is interesting? We made a project for a power distribution. Have you, re have you ever realized that these power towers are just single, uh, single purpose items? They just hold the wires. And there are billions of those all around the globe. The highest one is two meters lower than the Eiffel Tower, of course, standing in China. But why it should be a single use? What would you use well, it? Um, every one of you know the wind turbines where the blades turn this way. That's well known and it's installed everywhere. But do you know there, there exists a wind turbine which turned this way? Or okay. even, even through vibration, it generates electricity? What about to put this power generation devices inside the towers. Hmm. Because there is a lot of wasting between power station and the consumer. The, the waste uh, energy, it's really huge. I never, I never thought about it, but it's really huge. So All right, hold on. We got, a, this way. we got a couple of questions. Um, uh, Tom Bonola said, um, <clears throat> it just sounds like another way of saying supply chain transparency, but in a digital context. Um, Victor says, I use the term enterprise consilience. 
which basically is the sum of all info and knowledge available for all the elimination of information silos enables the awareness and improve creativity, sense of ownership, et cetera. Victor, we, we talk about that. We call it the unified namespace. Um, you know, all nodes are all producers and consumer of information are nodes in an ecosystem. Um, let's see. Uh, Josh Stover said, what do you mean by the power of touch? Uh, Michael? Uh, the power of, of touch is that you make something with your hands generally. If you do it in a in an Excel sheet, you cannot touch it. But if you do something like this, uh, one example, uh, I was in a factory which wasted a, a special plastic material. And I take a sample and I come next week back and I make out of this sample a lamp, lamp shade generally, and I bring it to the office. And in the moment when the people see it, they can touch it, they immediately stop wasting this material because they see the potential. What is interesting that the touch, the physical touch, it's very, it's one of the strongest memory which you have in your life. What is negative about the digitalization that you cannot touch the results. It's just nice picture, nice images. Everything is nice in virtual reality. And even if you have the gloves, that's not the touch, the real one. I was surprised myself how powerful it is. You remember it for years and generally for your, if you burn your fingers because you have been not careful as a child, you will remember it for whole life. And this yeah. is how power of touch life works. All right, hold on. So, um, not uh, David said, not trying to be argumentative. I'm also critical of Industry 4.0 concept. I think unified namespace, smart connected manufacturing, digital twins are more useful concepts to pursue. Uh, David also said, uh, people have very different ideas of Industry 5.0. I don't think you can state a definition just yet. There are people that say it's about people centered, and others say that it's about waste. Others say it's about, you know, VR and metaverse. Um, Josh said, how and uh, how can you say that you own the IP of Industry 5.0? And then Mazin said, how do you learn more about your procedures? How does one become an ambassador? Uh, I will start with the IP. I was the first one who wrote about it, who published it, who is acknowledged even by, uh, by the academics as the one who make it. So the IP ownership is mine. I do not limit the others, but if they try to, uh, and many do, including European uh, Commission, if they try to generally use the name just as a sales tool, I try to fight against it because it's not a sales tool, it's a global economy system. Without my work, and I have wrote over 5,000 articles in, in seven years, there will be no Industry 5.0 discussion at the moment in such a way where it's being discussed on the, on the stage of United Nations. There will be no. So I have it. But uh, how to become an ambassador? There is a simple rule. Uh, one country, one ambassador. We have 94. But if there is a country where ambassador is assigned, there is a so-called second layer of ambassadorship. You can become Industry 5.0 hero. And how to become both? You have to agree with, uh, ambassador has to agree with Decathlon. So there are 10 lines, uh, statement, which you have to agree and be in line with. And if you would like to become hero, you, there are 12 lines. So it's not Decathlon, but a dozen. Uh, two more additional ones are for supporting of the ambassador. Uh, and that's all. You don't have to have a special education degree. The ambassadors are very, it's, it's a group of people which will probably never meet in live, real life if, if there is not the aim. The aim of Industry 5.0 is to build wasteless world for all. And if there will be not such an aim, the group will, I will never meet. We have deans of universities, we have students, we have experts, we have uh, seniors, uh, are the oldest one is, I think, 84 at the moment. Uh, we have people, students, uh, unemployed, uh, CEOs of companies. Because every single one of us, every single one, is special. And this is exactly what is needed. I don't need 
94 microatoms. No, it will be horrible. <laughs> I need everyone has to be special and separated, has own experience. As I said, the role model is nature. I don't want to be IKEA. No, I want that everyone has their own product. And what is interesting, the power of touch is projected in a product. If you buy something which is made by, with love generally, you really feel it inside. You are able to pay even more. You are ready to pay more because you feel it inside. It sounds crazy, especially in, in Czech language. We don't use this uh, word love so frequently, but it is very interesting how different approach and how different you will behave with the product. If you get something for free, it will be the first thing which get wasted, no matter how much it costs. All right, we got one, one more question. All right, so um, uh, David said, uh, this just sounds like le digital lean manufacturing or digital circular economy. Uh, Tom Bonilla said what David said, perhaps a blend of both. Um, and then Tom said, all right, you know, you, you're talking about the um, single use of the electrical power lines. Let's say you have, turn those into wind turbines he's saying but those blades will have a limited lifespan eventually end up in a landfill um what would you what would you say to that uh i participated i was requested by the senator of wisconsin i'm i do not remember one of the u.s states generally he tried to uh, uh forbid the landfilling of the of the blades unfortunately he was not strong enough so it was not approved but a wind blade, you can make from one wind blade, you can make a building, you can make a shelter, you can make a bridge, you can make a lot of, and there are good examples for that. So I don't see any reason why should I waste it and put it on a landfill, except of the profit for one and only member of the chain, which is the waste company, which manage the landfill. If Tesla, and, uh, oh. uh, one, one more answer. Please do not understand industry 5.0 is digitalization. Digitalization is one of the tools, but the very first article, which I mentioned several times, was already on December 1st, 2015, called Industry 5.0 from virtual to physical. So it's generally swimming against the stream. So it's about physical operations. The digital is a good tool, but the result must be physical one. Okay. Michael, thank you so much for um, joining today. Everyone, thank you for joining in the live stream. Uh, you guys had some great questions today. Uh, Walker is, um, he was going to be here, but he had to, he's getting like prepared to travel uh, to a client site. Um, he's doing a digital transformation maturity assessment and this client, like, I think they paid like, Extra, they paid a lot more to have Walker to do the DTMA. So um, he's traveling on site, um, doing a lot of DTMAs right now. Uh, sponsor, we, we are announcing a new sponsor next week. I think we're getting all the paperwork signed out. We're really excited about this new partnership. Um, Josh, thanks for helping set up the live stream. Tom, everyone, thank you for joining. Um, so Walker will be back next week. Um, Mastermind Accelerator call tomorrow and... Um, I think we have mastermind this Friday. So that's it. Um, Michael, thanks so much again. Uh, let me wish to everyone, have a nice time free of waste and wasting in all its forms. Stay safe and free. That's my wish for you. Thanks a lot for having me. And thank you so much for your time. The most, uh, the most valuable thing that we have. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.